there is a small negative connotation to telling someone that they are now going to move into a cubicle. So the term cubicle is generally not perceived as, as a positive term in the industry. We refer to them as open office systems. They started as a concept called open office landscape, and they were trying a brand new concept in terms of space planning and offices that would allow for uh, the removal of walls, a great deal of flexibility. Open office landscape did not uh, succeed. Its major failure was not succeeding in the United States because uh, it eliminated or it meant to eliminate the concept of hierarchy in the office space. Open spaces in the newspaper industry used to be the norm. Um, and then slowly we gravitated to be like every other kind of place and put in cubicles and those sorts of things. Um, I think that it's common, but it really um, gets in the way of, of putting out good newspapers and good news organizations. And it used to be, when I was you know, in that kind of environment, the editor would just yell over to you, hey, Bob, I got a question. You know, what were you thinking about when you said this? And I would yell back my answer. Now, because of the cubicle, you know, we get up and, you know, and then and we have quiet conversations and there are fewer people involved in it. And instead of it becoming this discussion where things are getting better and, you, you know, you're debating it, it becomes just a little quiet you know, water cooler type conversation. Systems can encourage or discourage communication, but their role is to economize on square footage. When you are dealing with productivity in an office, there are many, many factors that are involved. There are psychological factors and there are functional factors. Uh, the systems manufacturers would, would tell you when selling their product that you're creating in a smaller amount of square footage a much more functional space. I have a tendency to like to see things. So one or two places I'm going to have my stuff. It's either going to be in my active zone or it's going to be in my anticipated zone. And obviously Active zone is where I'm working at now, things I need to get accomplished very quickly. And then anticipate it, I know I need to get to it, but it's not a top priority right now. So everything else kind of goes in the archive. Uh, I, don't, I don't think anybody would say from a psychological standpoint, uh, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, that you're going to make someone psychologically happier by taking them from a larger amount of square footage with a door and putting them in a smaller amount of square footage. Um, if they were to offer me a um, smaller work area in a cubicle, I couldn't do my job effectively. You take newer workers who are not used to working in a traditional office and you put them in a well laid out, well functioning, brand spanking new system space, uh, they'll function well in it and they'll be reasonably happy in it, in part, not knowing what they've missed. I bet you if you ask anyone who does a job that they would say that they would rather not function in a cubicle either. I would like to have an office. I like for my cubicle, I guess, or my workspace to reflect who I am. And so if I have clients come in, it's just a little more fun. I don't know. I just don't, I don't want to be a corporate drone. <laughs> Uh, I worked with a woman at another newspaper, which will not be named, um, for whom that was an overriding, everyday type of concern. Who had more space than her? Who had a bigger office? There was a proposal 
on the table during a redesign of the organization to move her and her team to another area in which she would still have a private office, but it'd be much smaller, but her team would have a more effective work area. And she just, you know, put an end to that because she felt personally threatened by that. I've never really understood that, but I guess some people do think that way. Another thing you'll notice is that we have the cafe area here, and that goes back to my whole um, thought behind the kitchen, the cafe area. We know that people are working a lot differently now. Starbucks, Caribou, coffee are now the third office. Having this cafe area here is really helpful for us. People can come congregate here over coffee, over sodas, and things of that nature. But the nice thing is about it, it just makes it really comfortable for users. It's very intuitive. I will tell you that uh, there are times when we'll actually go out to our lobby where there are couches and tables and sort of a living room kind of setting and have conversations. Um, I keep a couch in here in this office with more comfortable chairs so that we can sit around and just have, you know, more comfortable conversations. I would be delighted to give up half of the space that I have if we could create a common area for everyone to be able to use. Um, it just, I think that what it does is allow people to get to know each other and exchange ideas in a more effective environment. In an industry that is changing as quickly as ours is changing, that what made sense um, in 1990, say, um, has no relevance to the jobs that we're doing in 2007. I think that we're seeing some change. We got to give them better lounges, we got to give them daycare. What are we going to do beyond salary that is going to make these people think this is a, a better place to work?